You know, I know sometimes that um, in unity, for those of us who've been here for a while, you know, we try to not necessarily go with some of the traditional stuff because we're really trying to explore new visions and new terrain. But sometimes it's just beautiful to go back to what we started in, is it not? It's beautiful to go back to what we know because once we come into a new experience, once we come into a new understanding of God and the Christ and what it means to be our own savior, we can take that song and interpret it. We can take it and integrate it into the very fiber of our being to lift us up to know that how great we are, how great you all are, how great the spirits that invade this place and with us all the ways are great. And that together as a community, how great we are. Today is Easter Sunday. Today is the culmination in many ways of days through the Lenten period. And so we continue on this journey knowing that we started this journey more than 40 days ago, looking at this idea of how do we let go. Many of us have so many things in our lives that are challenging, that are hurting, that are confusing, that are chaotic. And if it's not even in our own lives, we can see it and feel it around us, yes? And so we come here today knowing the truth, wanting to re-envision this idea of Easter, re-envision this idea of who this man was called Jesus. Or if there was not a man called Jesus, what was this movement that these groups of people believed in to the point where they were willing to sacrifice their very lives? The theme for April is love is my religion. And it's about exploring our master teacher Jesus, but within a larger context of master teachers, within a larger context of spiritual vision, within a larger context of historical and eternal wisdom that all the great teachers and people have shared throughout the beginning of time. We are in Holy Week, but we are in a time that is not just about Christianity, it's a time that is holy for so many other religious traditions, Judaism, Passover, Ramadan, all of this, we're in this beautiful kind of sacred juice, sacred energy, because everyone all over the world in many different areas of the world and different religious expressions are in this same knowing in this same search, in this same lifting up of life and of love. Resurrection is celebrated today. But resurrection for us in unity is about moving to repent, meaning moving to release, moving to renew, moving to rise, moving, to resurrect to your divine nature within. It's very different at some level from other ways we may have understood or interpreted what we're doing here. Last week, we talked about stepping out of fear and into victorious love. We celebrated Palm Sunday, and we used this idea of the palm, which historically, symbolically, and in actuality represents strength and fruitfulness and flexibility and resilience. And so we called from this community and from each of you to let go of fear and move into love. Today, we'll be exploring just a little bit about what this means to be resurrecting Jesus' notion of love. Jesus and the resurrection of love. I will suggest to you that ultimately, Jesus' journey 
And this idea of what we're doing here, what we celebrate every year, is about building the beloved community. Let's think about who Jesus was, what we know from biblical passages. We know that he came and he spoke about truth. He talked about hypocrisy. He talked about justice. He talked about bringing in people who were thought of as literally lepers, right? Bringing in people into the fold and saying, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. We don't care what all these other people say that you are or that you've done or that you haven't done. You are worthy. He brought in everyone to say, Everyone is an expression of the divine and deserves respect and dignity. This is the legacy that we move into when we think about this. This is the resurrection of what we're talking about, moving into building this community where we all can be together, reminding us of our sacred commission This is the covenant, the new covenant that Jesus speaks of. He's talking about our commission that we have forgotten to care for each other, to love each other, to protect each other, and to stand with each other in love. This is the new covenant that he brings to us. And this idea, so prominent in his teachings about forgiveness, We're told in the story, right, that even in the last breath that he has, he says, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. He speaks not in anger. He speaks not in retribution. He's not speaking to rally cry and to rise up people to overthrow or do anything. He's coming in peace and saying, no matter what you do to me, no matter what you've done to me, No matter what you say of me, I hold the Christ in you, and I love you. This is the teaching that we share and what we are trying in this community to amplify. The Easter story is about crucifixion. It is about resurrection, but it is also and ultimately about ascension. The core message for us when we're talking about resurrection is the message of transformation. No matter where you find yourself in life, who's finding themselves in life right now that is like, oof, struggle, hard, don't know what's going on, chaos, sadness. The message that we hold to in this time and through this story and through Jesus' example in his life and through the people that followed him is that there was always the miracle of transformation. Your job is not to know how. Your job is not to know when. Your job is only to have faith and believe. And that sounds like a tall order when you're in this darkness, but that is true. You have to muster up that tiny little bit to say, I don't know, spirit. I don't know, but I'm going to trust. It's going to come from somewhere. It's going to come from someone. It's going to come in the most mundane and weird way. But this transformation is coming because this is who we are as Christed beings. We have been lied to our entire lives to say that we have to search for a God out there, pie in the sky, that is going to grant us if we so humble ourselves, if we so do things to make ourselves punishable, we admit that we're we're punishable. That is not what Jesus' message was. Let's think about this for a second, good people. We have been told by traditional Christianity, how many folks went to a church, and I'm sure there'll be churches abounding all over here in Nashville, that will say, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. We've heard that, but hold that for a second. Now, weren't we also told that if Jesus died on the cross for our sins, what does that mean? That we are cleansed that we are cleansed, that we are not sinners. So then why 
do we have people telling us all the time that we are sinners? It doesn't hold up even logically, good people. Does anyone hear me here today? This is what we have to start questioning. We have to start questioning these things. It doesn't mean that we don't have all of these things that we consider. It just means that we have to also bring these questions to bear. It doesn't mean that there aren't people that do bad things. It doesn't mean that people are not in their divine self. For unity, when we say sin, it means missing the mark. It means not on point, not on your divine self. And so does that happen? Yes, but it is very different than calling someone a sinner, than integrating that identity into your being. It's very different. And so I call all of you all here today to let that go too. If that is part of your spiritual legacy, if that is part of what you have been told or what you hold in your subconscious or your conscious mind, let that go. You are not a sinner. You are a child of God. You are person of the most high. You are a Christed being and you are deserving of all the love and all the glory and all the mercy and all the compassion and all the justice and all the beauty and all the joy of life. This, this is who we are. This is who we are. I tell people all the time, the hardest journey, the biggest journey, and the most powerful journey will simply be one thing, to remember. To remember. To remember who you are and who you came into this iteration of life to be. Children don't see themselves in that light. Children don't understand that because that is not our divine nature. And so hold to that here. When we're talking about this resurrection, we're talking about resurrecting the truth of ourselves, the truth of our lives, the ability to be able to connect with this idea of Jesus, the master teacher, and his life. How does it make sense for me? How does it claim, how does it make sense for my life? How can I interpret this and take it and integrate it as my own? When Jesus started the final leg of his journey, and he's coming into what he already knows will potentially be his death. Before he moves into that last moment where he is arrested and then tortured and crucified, he has what we know of as the Last Supper. He comes together with his disciples to share in this meal. And the idea is really interesting. It's always intrigued me that that was the last thing he did, really. And that it's shared biblically as this important part of the journey. And for me, I think what it's sharing and what he's imparting in this is this idea of, again, my final act, my final thing will be bringing you all together as the beloved community, bringing you all together to remember all of who you are and all of what I've been teaching you and all of what I hope for you all to send out into the world, not just as my legacy, but as our legacy as a community that we're building. And so he did what we now do in many churches as communion. Does anyone come from religious traditions where you do communion? Yep. How many people did not? This is curious for me. Okay. You did not. So I was raised Catholic. Any Catholics in the house? <laughs> so you know, right? I mean, I was fortunate that my grandmother, who was like the spiritual head of the household, you know, we had to go to church, but she didn't make us go to communion. And what was even better, she never made us go to confession. <laughs> she was like, you have to absolve for your own sins with God. And I loved that about her. She understood, like there was a connection that did need it, not need to be mediated through someone else. So, you know, but sometimes it was like that pinch, right? Who got those pinch? Like you need to go to communion, right? Or you need to go to confession. I didn't necessarily get that, but sometimes that's what happened. 
And so maybe in our mind we have this negative conception of communion. Or maybe we did it for years without really understanding the deep and profound implications. See, the ritual of communion really comes from pagan traditions, which we don't talk about. (laughs) And it also comes from an idea that it's about the metaphysical, which is more than the physical, more than this act that we're doing. It's also coming from the mystical. Much of what we do in communion has been gutted out, frankly, so that we don't understand the mysticism, the beauty of what we're doing when we're engaging in communion. So for Jesus, when he did this, it's a blood, right? He said, this is my body and my blood, which for some of us are like, ooh, that sounds real satanic, right? Like, what kind of stuff is that? But it's, again, metaphor. It's mystical. It's talking about what this really means. So what is he saying, ultimately? He's doing this ritual with his beloved community, and he's saying, you know, this is the bread, which is what? Sustenance. It's nutrition. It's something that gives life, that gives you strength, that gives you purpose, that gives you the will to live. And similarly so, the blood, what is that? That's the vitality of life, the cleansing nature that happens within us, the thing that animates us in life. He's using these ideas to also say we are taking them in. When we go through a communion process, when he's talking about this, we're taking that in to understand, I am taking in this body and blood. I am taking in this substance in life. I am taking in this bread and wine coming ultimately from the earth, grown from this earth something, from energy outside of us, and I'm taking it in and I'm calling it my own. I'm integrating it within my very being. Our co-founder, Charles Filmer, talked about the medical, metaphysical meaning of communion. He says that it is about sharing the deep aspirations of our heart. When we do this, we're also, how are we feeding each other in this process? How are we seeing each other together in this process? How are we connecting with each other in this sacred process? As the bread as the wine, as the vine. Take it, eat this as my body, drink ye all of it. Eat my body and drink my blood. Even in the very nature of him saying that, he's rattling cages. Did y'all know that? Because in Mosaic law, you couldn't mix blood, right? You couldn't even eat flesh that had blood. All the blood was taken out of them. So in him saying that, it's almost like He's always a spiritual provocateur. He's always wanting you to think. He's always wanting you to take this all on your own terms. And so he's saying this for a reason. No matter what is out there, what you think, now is the time for you to understand it, for you to integrate it, and for you to act on it. See, the Passover meal, which is what he sort of doing in this time and what we then celebrate in communion is the time when the Israelites were celebrating the, um, leaving Egypt, right? Leaving slavery. And so I think at some level, maybe it was these rote traditions, these rote rituals that he's trying to kind of bring back to life so that we understand. So he's saying, you're not in Israel anymore. You're not a slave anymore, but how are you still in slavery? How is your mind still in slavery? How is your body still in slavery? And how are you not living an abundant life in the spirit? This is what he calls his disciples to in that time. And this, beautiful people, is what I will call for you right here and right now. We're going to do a metaphysical communion service before we end this beautiful day here together. And I'm going to call up my two folks here that are going to help. If y'all want to come up here first. And Vero, are you able to come up? So we're going to do a metaphysical communion service. We have um, these boxes, these little baskets here. 
And what I want you all to think about in this time is how are you integrating the spirit? How are you integrating the God of your understanding? How are you integrating the allness, the oneness, the energetic resonance, whatever you call it, whatever you want to think about it as, whatever is kind of more resonant for you, how are you integrating that in your life? And how are you taking this just as a beautiful symbol for you? And maybe you do ingest it, or maybe you take it home and put it on a shelf and pray with it. I don't know what you want to do with it. And maybe some of you are like, I'm not ready for that, and that's good too. Nobody is forced to do anything here. But what I'm asking everyone to do is to do it as a symbol of creating the beloved community in the here and now. This time of metaphysical communion is really about us, just the remembrance that we carry that spirit, that we are that spirit in expression. Our co-founder, Charles Fillmore, I loved one of his favorite sayings. He would always say that there is a place within you where there is a church service going on all the time. And that's what this is reminding us of that that service, that communion, that union of the common, that's the other way we flip it around and think about it. We are in also common union. We are bonded together and so we move out of that bondage. We move, move out of that time of bondage into bondedness with ourselves, with our friends, with our families, with our communities, and even those we don't like. We are bonded, and when we remember that, when we remember that divine mission and purpose, then we can't really help but have a little pep in our step. We can't help but glow a little bit more. We can't help but have some sunshine and some sparkle going on. Because you know your sacred truth. Are we with me on that? Yes. Jesus reminds us that even in the midst of trial, challenge, and pain, there is always a new tomorrow. There is always a new birth. There is always an ascension. And there is always that Hosanna, hallelujah. Do not forget that. Amen.